Sweet Baby Inc. is the company you call when you want your game to be dead on arrival. There are hundreds of thousands to millions of gamers boycotting SBI games right now and generally staying away from titles that openly announce that they're working with narrative consultation companies. And we had just found out that a game called Capes was added to the DEI detected website after it consulted with Sweet Baby Inc. And the devs had a meltdown saying it's not that serious. We didn't take into consideration basically anything they suggested, but now gamers are calling their BS. I have a few things I want to show off, but before I get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, we are talking about an indie team here. We're not talking about a major studio like a Ubisoft, right? So when you have a smaller company, especially one with only like a dozen employees, yeah, you need to be careful with what you're spending your money on. And they're trying to convince us that they gave Sweet Baby money for work that they didn't put into their game, even though, you know, the proof is in the pudding. If you take a quick peek at this game, you can see it's riddled with DEI, which of course the developers are allowed to do, but we are also allowed to not support and we are allowed to criticize. So this was the initial situation. This is a That Park Place article. It says Spitfire Interactive issued a response after its recently released game Capes was added to Cabrutus's DEI detected website after it was revealed. It consulted with Sweet Baby Inc. It really seems like they wanted to hide this because it was not on Sweet Baby's webpage, which a lot of people are feeling at this point that Sweet Baby isn't actively updating their website because they know there's such a boycott. And if you get to the credits of a game, you either are taking the time and searching it up on you know, YouTube or a platform where content creators are playing it, or you played the game yourself and by then they've already got your money and you can't get a refund. So a lot of people are feeling like there's a lot of games slipping under the radar, which definitely could be the case. And this is one that actually had until Cabrutus had just recently found it. He had announced the game was added to DEI Detected on X, writing, Sup guys, I bring a new Sweet Baby Inc. game to you. He then shared a link to DEI Detected, which notes that Sweet Baby Inc. is listed in the game's credits, including the company's co-founder, uh, co-founder, excuse me, Dave Bedard, and one of its main agitators, Chris Kindred. Now, what is really fascinating to me is how many Sweet Baby consultants actually worked on this game, because if you start taking a look at the game's credits, there are about nine main developers from executive producers, writers, programmers, things like that. There's nine main devs on this title. But the sweet baby list of consultants is a whopping 12 people. So you're telling me that they had more consultants working on this game and helping them with this game than actual developers, and they didn't put any of their suggestions into the game? I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to call BS because you are talking about indies here. They do not have spare money to throw around just wherever they want, seeing if something is going to work or they could get more suggestions and then just casually disregard those. There are large companies who don't even do that, who will take into consideration what a Sweet Baby Inc. says no matter what their feedback is because they've already paid the freaking money. This just comes across as very suspicious and the developer response to the backlash was not positive. It's not a good look. Spitfire Interactive's developer Penta addressed the game being added to DEI Detected's website saying, we already had three months and 14 pages of constructive discussion about DEI in the forum and delivered a gameplay update focusing on exactly what the player base wanted, leading to 80% positive recent reviews, which, by the way, the all reviews on Steam are actually sitting at mixed, so that's not a good look. He continued, you don't have to take my word for it, you can actually read up on it yourselves, but we were already able to explain that SBI only worked briefly, mainly during the four to five people strong indie dev team in contact with 
fitting voice actors. Together with the devs two plus years ago, and many first skeptical players were able to find out that there is no hidden agenda or something else we want to force down your throats. This comes across to me as a portfolio game. Okay, these are individuals who do want to work at the largest companies in the industry, which it's great to have dreams. If that's what they really want to reach for, go for it. This is just the game that they made. It's not a game that I'm personally interested in, but it's like they put as much diversity and inclusivity into it so they could put it on their portfolio and then say, oh, by the way, I made this indie game and it is super diverse. I, this is why I think I'd be a great addition to your team, because if you really start looking at this game, that's exactly what this is, is a DEI fest. And I have already said this, but they're allowed to make it, yet we are also allowed to criticize it. And this game does not look good. And now gamers are calling their BS, which is completely understandable. There's a couple of different posts. This first one is from Grums, aka Mark Kern. He had made this post saying SBI Games Capes is trying hard to downplay it. And people are responding with things like it's not working, which yeah, clearly it isn't working. People are not happy with them for trying to hide the involvement and then downplay the involvement. Things are just not adding up. Uh, I can't believe that there are still so many game developers doing business with SBI despite all SBI games flopping. I'm assuming that right now they have such a back catalog of games that are going to be coming out that they, you know, do not control whether a developer releases them or not. And the developers are like, oh, well, we've already put so much time and money into this. We're not just going to scrap it at this point. Now, in let's say a year or a year and a half, will companies still be working with Sweet Baby Inc.? I personally Think so. I'm not shocked that there are still so many game developers doing business with SBI because this is the way that the mainstream is going. These are the narratives that the mainstream wants to push. They want everything to be as diverse as and inclusive as possible. And I say this a lot. Um, you know, diversity and inclusivity are not problems. The problem is the way that companies push them into content and they completely disregard good storytelling or characters with a lot of depth. And instead of saying, oh, here's this character who's a warrior and is you know, struggling to keep his apprentice alive, and he's trying to you know, balance killing, which he feels is bad, and keeping this kid alive, which is good, but he's also gay. It's, oh, he's gay, and he's black, and by the way, he's trying to do a good thing by keeping this kid alive. These are the problems with modern storytelling. There is a very big difference. It's like in Final Fantasy 16, you had Dion, or Bahamut, who happened to be gay. Nobody criticized that character because he was well-written. It wasn't, oh, gay, gay, gay. It was, oh my god, it's this character who's really important to the story. By the way, he's got someone he's romantically interested in that happens to be a guy. Like, these are not being criticized because they're well-written. These individuals, though, working with companies like Sweet Baby, they just don't understand that. Uh, I wonder how long until SBI finally collapses. I do not think that SBI is ever going to fully collapse unless we see a complete reset in the gaming industry because there are so many consultant companies now that they could just go to another and then they could go to another after that, which is a major issue. I don't think that these people are going to, you know, magically go away one day. Uh, more SBI consultants in the credits than developers. Yeah, that, in my opinion, is really not a good sign. It's very suspicious because, again, they're trying to convince us that, oh, we basically disregarded what SBI said. Uh, that Park Place had also posted their article, uh, any DEI consultation is too much consultation, announcing layoffs soon then. DEI and SBI means no buy. So yeah, there are a lot of gamers who are not happy with Sweet Baby Inc. and who are calling bullshit against these developers. So it will be interesting to see going forward if they actually make any statements, if they continue to try to downplay SBI's involvement. But right now it is not 
not looking good for their game capes. But that's all that I had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I'll talk to you all again in the next video really soon.